The Garden is an open, inclusive, Christ-like community where people from many paths gather to explore, engage, and seek inspiration to transform our world through the unconditional love of God. Explore. Engage. Inspire. Join us online, in person, and in the community while featuring local artists. Grow with us online Sundays at 9.15 a.m. Ah! We're glad you're here. Last week, we talked about the beauty that's found in nature, the palette of beauty that we can see around us. But what happens when you can't see? Today, we're going to talk about gaining our spiritual sight and the light that overcomes the darkness. So join me in these universal words of welcome. Shalom, Salam, Namaste. Peace, welcome. We're glad you're here. Hello everyone, I'm so glad you could be with us online today. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in person next Sunday for our in-person service. We haven't seen some of you since Father's Day, others since Mother's Day, and a few of you since Easter. And well, many of you we haven't seen at all because we've been online all this time. So set yourself a reminder to come be part of next week's service. It's being hosted at the Union Chapel Great Room. It's Sunday at 11 a.m. Plan to take a little extra time after service to look around Union Chapel, have some refreshments, and sit in on an opportunity to ask some questions and provide feedback on this space that's being offered to us by Union Chapel. 
Union Chapel is just west of Keystone Avenue on 86th Street. It's across from the Ironworks. Remember, the service is at 11 a.m. Our 25th going on 26th anniversary celebration is just one month away. It's Friday, September 17th. You must RSVP to this event, so be sure you do it before the end of the month. But I gotta tell you, seating capacity might run out before the deadline at the end of the month, so if you wanna be there, RSVP at thegardenonline.org slash 25 to lock in that reservation. If you've been around the garden, you know that the garden supports local nonprofit organizations through our Garden Gives Grant program. Here in the third quarter, a very special organization has been selected. For more on this big give, let's check in with Pastor Carolyn. Hello gardeners, special day for us here at the garden. It is a big give day and I am so excited to be here at Gigi's Playhouse with Denise Jensen, the executive director. Denise, we are honored to be part of a new venture with Gigi's Playhouse with a grant, which we refer to as a big give and a little give, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But tell us a little bit about you and about Gigi's Playhouse. Well, first, thank you to everybody. Um, this is an amazing new partnership for us as well, and we're so excited for you guys to be here. Gigi's Playhouse opened in 2015 here in Indianapolis, the north side, and we provide free educational and therapeutic programs to individuals with Down syndrome. And so right now we started the Playhouse with just under 60 families, now we serve 540 families in central Indiana. And again, all of our programs are at no cost to families. We do not want cost to be a barrier of participation. That is amazing, simply amazing. Now I saw that your, your mission and your vision and your values is all about you viewing and seeing a world of inclusion. That's right. I mean, I think we are looking at people first and looking at individuals' abilities, not the diagnosis. And so what we're trying to do in our community here is providing more opportunities and inclusion. Marvelous, yes. marvelous. And the garden, as part of our mission statement is, we are committed to being an open and inclusive community. So we are excited about this project because it yeah. not only hits your mission, but our mission as well. Now I noted not only do you have uh, programs for folks to get together on a regular basis, but you also provide education and then career counseling as well. Yes, yeah, so we actually serve all ages. So if a mom gets a diagnosis, a family gets a diagnosis, they can actually come to us. Hopefully we are a guiding light um, of resources and information and get them connected in the community and then once they're babies we have baby programs of early sign language music and movement all the way up to our adult programming and we go out and volunteer in the community and workforce development marvelous now you if you're a Costco shopper you know where Gigi's Playhouse is yes. well at least the Costco <laughs> on the east side uh, it's right across the street here tell us a little bit about this amazing location so when we talk about you know accessibility for us it was really important and so we're actually on the north side in Castleton on a bus route oh. and so we felt that you know um, allowing our families to connect easy accessibility right off of 465 and it's kind of been phenomenal if you build it they will come and we have had families that have come from all parts of Indiana and even Ohio at this point. Um, and then in, during the pandemic, we actually moved and Indianapolis created Gigi's at Home, a virtual platform. We did not cancel one single program during the pandemic. And we could not do that with our, without our amazing volunteers. And now it went nationally, got picked up nationally. And now it's in 54 countries and thousands of children have been able to connect with Gigi's because of the work we did here in Indianapolis. That's marvelous. But again, we couldn't do that without our amazing supporters and our volunteers. That's what it's all about. I'm, I'm only one of two staff people, and it really takes volunteers and our community leaders to help us in our mission work. Well, Denise, on behalf of The Garden, we are honored to be sharing in this opportunity with you. And uh, your grant of $2,000 is being electronically delivered Yay! to you. And then also on September 12th, we will have our once a month communion right here at Gigi's Playhouse. So we wanna invite you to come. That's also- And I will be here, by the way. Marvelous. I'm excited to meet everybody. So it'll, you will get to meet me. Marvelous. <laughs> it'll be at 11 o'clock right here. And then there'll be a list of little give items that you can uh, share in to support this effort. And hey, maybe you'll want to check into volunteering here at Gigi's Playhouse as well. 
Denise, your enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you. Your love for this program lives on your face <laughs> and your heart, and we are honored to be here with you. So, Well, again, thank you again, because honestly, I couldn't do the work that we do here at Gigi's without you guys. So on behalf of myself and the board, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Pastor Carolyn and Denise, for introducing us to Gigi's Playhouse. Now that the garden has presented Gigi's with our big give, it's up to each of us to shower the playhouse with our little give. Between now and Sunday, September 12th, let's collect art and craft supplies, gas cards, and monetary donations for Gigi's Playhouse. Then on September 12th at 11 a.m., we'll host our drive-through communion in the parking lot of Gigi's Playhouse. There we'll present all of our collection to this wonderful organization. What a reason to give. For more details on all that I have mentioned here, including a supplies list for Gigi's Playhouse, it can all be found on the links page of our website at thegardenonline.org slash links. Now, let's check back in at Gigi's Playhouse where Terrell will help us settle into service with a prayer. Heavenly Father God, thank you for your wonderful blessings for all of us, Father God. Father God, I want to thank you for all my epic friends and my Gigi's, Father God. Father God, I want to thank you for all you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Today we're talking about spiritual sight. Um, and I kind of want to talk about, well, when I was younger, I, um, I had to wear like a, a patch over one eye and I had like trifocals. I was kind of like cross-eyed. And... Um, and I would do things like I hated wearing my glasses because kids were like really cruel. But anyway, um, I would break my glasses um, just so I wouldn't have to wear them. And uh, one time I broke my glasses and um, my grandmother was asleep. She could sleep standing up. So she was sleeping and I like moved my glasses. I pushed them under her to make it look like she had broken them. And uh, it was a thing where I kind of I felt really bad because my grandmother felt bad that she had broken my glasses. So anyway, I had to confess that. But it's a thing like, you're the, even though the glasses were, you know, like helping me see and everything like that, but it was, I was ridiculed and people talked about me because I took that and had the glasses on. But because I kept them on, you guys don't see me with glasses because it corrected my, my vision. And so, um, just a, just shy of like two months ago, I was in the hospital and um, I was admitted because I had shingles on, like on right here. And I thought it was just a rash, but uh, it turned out to be shingles and it was in my eye. And uh, so they, uh, I guess, signed me into the hospital immediately after they saw that it was in my eye because they were afraid that uh, my sight would be affected or that I could lose my sight and it was scary because I didn't know that you know my sight would be even like um like in jeopardy because of like shingles or anything like that it's not that I took it for granted but I guess I kind of took it for granted so I guess my prayer today is about not taking things for granted and uh to appreciate you know those things that we do have my lord god I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will never fear you. You are ever with me. And you will never lead me to face my struggles alone. So I thank you, God, for having taken me through that. And um, I do appreciate you. And for those things that we sometimes look at as obstacles in the road, sometimes there are more for us to appreciate what we do have, and I thank you. I 
see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying I love you I hear babies cry them grow they'll learn much more than I'll ever know and I think to myself what a wonderful world yes I think to myself what a wonderful Today we continue our series that focuses on the beauty and wonder of creation and how we connect with God through nature, specifically through our senses. Not only that, but how God seeks to connect with us using our senses. Now for some, this may be counter to what you envision connecting God to look like. You may see that this is an internal prayer process connecting with God the connection with God moving inward. But we're gonna encourage you to do something very different over the next few weeks. We're going to encourage you to connect with the divine through tangible ways. Today, we're gonna focus on looking and seeing, looking at life from a divine perspective. You know, in the Bible, there is a lot about how God works through sight. The psalmist tells us that the Lord opens the eyes of the blind and opens the eyes of our hearts. Isn't that beautiful? The prophet Isaiah reminds us that God has made a promise that is a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind and to bring out the prisoners from darkness. God promises to lead the blind by the right road. Though they don't know where it will lead, we do know that God will guide us on unknown paths. God will guide us through the darkness to the light. Isaiah says, you who are blind, look up and see. And in Handel's Messiah, we sing, the eyes of the blind will be opened and all people so often walk in darkness will walk in a great light. Essentially, there are many metaphor, metaphors that remind us that we all get lost when we walk by human sight and not by faith. Now there's this condition, it's called visual agnosia, and it happens after someone who has been blind has surgery to correct the blindness. And medically, the condition is reversed, yet even with this surgical miracle, the person remains blind. Doctors can do all kinds of amazing things, but that final transformation, well, that's up to the individual. It is said that the individual must die as a blind person to be born into a sighted person. Eyes can see only if the patient has the will to see. You know, sometimes I think we all have a similar problem 
to the person who is blind, who cannot regain their sight. We have sight and we often commit to the way we see the world. When we look at life through our own eyes, not by faith, we only see what we are living at the moment. We get so absorbed by the conditions around us that we let the current conditions dictate our lives and we let conditions also dictate our responses. We can have sight, but still live in darkness. It can be a spiritual blindness or problem when we don't have a willingness to see beyond our limited perspective. For example, when everything is going our way, we consider ourselves happy. We see the world as a beautiful place. On the other hand, when things are not going our way, when the storms come, when we become discouraged, unhappy, and depressed, well, we allow our circumstances to rule the way we feel. We begin to see life differently. We see life as a big problem, and oftentimes those problems appear to be bigger than they actually are. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus puts it this way. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In some ways, I think in this text, Jesus is reminding all of us that like visual Ignatia, we can have a spiritual Ignatia as well. That is, we can be spiritually blind when we don't surrender our limited perspective to the powerful possibilities that come with looking at life through a spiritual lens, a lens of grace and mercy and hope. For these elements live and bear light in the world in ways beyond our understanding, in divine ways. What if today we decided we were going to look at the world through a spiritual lens first, to look from a spiritual perspective or view life in a spiritual way? I believe life can look really different if we do because we're offered something more than just our limitations. We're offered a divine perspective, a divine perspective that is eternal, the past, the present, the future, all at the same time. Spencer and I had the honor this past week of going to Gigi's Playhouse. We were there and we had an opportunity to meet some of the participants in the program and their amazing executive director, Denise Jensen. Now, Gigi's Playhouse is committed to change the way the world views Down syndrome and to send a global message of acceptance for all. Gigi's holds a vision to see the world where individuals with Down syndrome are accepted and embraced in their families, their schools, and in their communities. Denise and her team seek to change lives through consistent delivery of free educational, therapeutic, and career development programs for individuals with Down syndrome. Programs that benefit not only them, but their families, their community as well, all with play in a playhouse model. Now, not only does Gigi's Playhouse make a difference for those who are part of the program, but everyone who is involved there as well are often changed by their experience. Now, we were introduced to the program by our own Marcy Struble, who volunteers there on a regular basis. I think in the best of circumstances, this place is changing lives, including Marcy's. And I ho certainly hope that you too will come and see for yourselves on September 12th, when we gather for communion, communion and we drop off our little give school supplies for Gigi's Playhouse. Now, I also want to note about this amazing place that even in the most challenging circumstances, Gigi's was able to live into their vision and desire to create a community of inclusion. Denise and her team were not going to let the conditions of this world get in the way of their vision and their mission, not even the pandemic. See, on March 10th, 2019, 
Denise could very well see that they would not be able to meet on site. So she began visioning and envisioning and seeing participants and volunteers connecting with Gigi's at home. And yet, without even missing a beat, in a matter of days, she was able to deliver supplies and for participants and volunteers had ways to connect via Zoom and the community of inclusion was up and running. Why? Because of vision. In the second letter of Peter, the author encourages his readers to work on improving their eyesight in faith by putting into practice what they believe over what they see. The author says this, so don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given. Complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love. Each dimension fitting into and developing the others. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you. After being around Denise and the folks at Gigi's Playhouse, it makes me ask the question, how can my spiritual eyes be opened in ways that I savor life as she does and as all those folks at Gigi's Place do? How can I live so that a challenge can become an opportunity, a crisis turn into a time of growth? How can I change the lens of limitation to see that in each and every moment there are powerful possibilities? I think first, we need to recognize that we are all blind in some way or another. How and where we were raised, the education we have, the places we live, the people we hang out with, all these different elements in life set our sight and vision in a particular direction. And oftentimes we end up judging what's right and wrong in the world through this particular lens. We end up sitting in judgment of others based on our limited vision. Perhaps that's what Jesus was trying to get to here in Matthew 7 when he says, When you notice the little piece of dust in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood in your own eye, how can you say to your friend, Let me take that little piece of dust out of your eye. Look at yourself. You still have a big piece of wood in your own eye. You hypocrite. First, take the wood out of your own eye then you will see clearly to take the dust out of your friend's eye. Spending just a little bit of time with others who live in downright love and grace makes me pause to ask why it is that I see life with such a limited vision, why I can be judgmental of others. Being with folks like Amanda and Terrell made me think about what I need to do to change myself, to be more loving. Perhaps it's time to take that big log out of my own eye and really ponder what it looks like to find success in this life. In Seeing the Invisible God, Philip Yancey suggests that perhaps the spiritual or unseen world requires an inbuilt set of senses activated only through some sort of spiritual quickening. Others might call it a spiritual awakening. Well, it doesn't matter what you call it. What matters is taking the steps to shift your life in a way that you can be open to seeing life differently. For you, that might be a commitment to change your thought patterns or spending more time with someone in life who is very different than you or has a very different life than your own. Perhaps you need to spend some time with someone you admire or people you have compassion for. See, what matters most is to be mindful. There is more than one way at looking at life and at life circumstances. Start visualizing life with a divine perspective. Seek God in all your living. Focus in ways that you see God's presence. You perceive God's power in spite of the obstacles living in the presence and the power of God and looking at the whole of life with God's eyes. 
I sometimes think of vision as looking at life through the lens of God's eyes, seeing situations just as God sees them. Too often we see things not as they are, but as we are. Think about that. Vision has to do with looking at life with a divine perspective of possibility, reading the scene with God in clear focus. Whoever wants to live differently must shift their vision to see with spiritual eyes. Amen. He was born in the summer of his 27th year Coming home to a place he'd never been before He left yesterday behind him You might say he was born again You might say he found a key for every door When he first came to the mountains His life was far away on the road hanging by a song but the spring's already broken and he doesn't really care it keeps changing fast and it don't last for long the colorado rocky mountain high i've seen it rain and fire in the sky Silver clouds below. You saw everything as far as you can see. And they say he got crazy once and he tried to touch the sun. And he lost a friend, kept the memory. Now he walks in quiet solitude, the forests and the streams, seeking grace. And every step he takes His side is turned inside himself To try and understand The serenity of a clear blue mountain lake And the Colorado Rocky Mountain High I've seen it rain and fire in the sky Talk to God and listen to the casual reply. Rocky Mountain High. Rocky Mountain High. Now his life is full of wonder, but his heart still knows some fear. Of a simple thing you cannot comprehend Why they try to tear the mountains down To bring in a couple more More people, more scars upon the land And the Colorado Rocky Mountain High I've seen it rain and fire in the sky Sun Eagle Fly Rocky Mountain High It's Colorado Rocky Mountain High I've seen it rain and fire in the sky Friends around the campfire
So our friend Alex here is going to send us off with a special prayer and blessing. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with you, thou womb Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, please. amen. I just wish Jesus play how it can be back to normal. And when you say life back to normal, how could I help in making life back to normal now today? Well, I think probably support other Down syndrome. That's what I do. Uh, people with Down syndrome to support them. Yeah. How can I support them? By praying for people that um, that treat other people people extra special with their um, extra special with their disability. So to pray for people in their disabilities. Yeah. And how about if we pray for kindness, love, and respect? Yeah. Treat and accept everyone. Yeah. I think we can all do that, can't we, gardeners? Go now in peace, and may the love of our God be yours. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore, let's all say it together. Amen. Amen.